Today's short lecture is going to be about Imam al Nisari. We don't find many literature, particularly in English, about the life of Imam al Nisari. Most of his biography are written in Arabic. Great Imam, um, you all know of him. He is the author of the very famous hadith book uh, known as Sunan al Nisai or Sunan al Sura as he named it. <coughs> His full name is Abu Abdurrahman Ahmad bin Shu'ayb bin Ali bin Sinan bin Bahar al Khurasani al Nisa'i. Now, Nisa'i is attributed to his um, homeland, Nasa, which is um, located in Turk Turkmenistan. So, Imam Nisa'i, as you know, he was born in Nasa in Turkmenistan um, in the year 240 AH. He started learning knowledge at a very young age. Um, he began his scientific um, Islamic journey when he was around 15 years old and he his first teacher was a great scholar of hadith his name is Qutayba bin Sa'id in Bakhlan his praises Qutayba bin Sa'id in Bakhlan um, he narrated hadith from Imam Malik and many other scholars as well from, of that class so he was a very um, educated and very respected um, hadith scholar. So Imam Nisa'i studied under him. Now, he studied under him for around 14 months, just over a year. Uh, he was study he studied hadith with under his guidance and he devoted Imam Nisa'i devoted himself to learning hadith. Um, it's important to mention his some of his character, his features. We we live in a current time where scholars um, not all scholars, some scholars they have, they possess a lot of knowledge. However, when it comes to actions, they fail. So it's important that we find that these great scholars, not only did they possess a great amount of knowledge, but with that knowledge, they acted upon the knowledge that they have gained. Abu al Hussein Muhammad bin uh, Musfil said that he heard um, from many scholars of Egypt, from Egypt. They acknowledged Imam al Nasai. They very they respected him because of his advancements in knowledge and in <clears throat> leadership as well. And they also stressed the fact that he was a very observant worshiper. He was diligent in praying, and he was consistently, persistently used to take part in Hajj. Um, and he was one of those individuals who acted upon the the traditions of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Not just narrate hadith. But on top of that, he acted upon all of the ahadith. It is known as that he, Imam in Nasai used to do a, a particular fast known as Sumer Dawood, uh, a, a fast done by Prophet Dawood alayhi salam. So that fast is called Sumer Dawood, which is you fast one day and you break the other day. So you fast one day, you break the other day. It just shows that Imam in Nasai was a very pious person as well. He married um, four times. Scholars mentioned of only one son whose name is um, Abdul Karim and he was one of the narrators of the Sunan of his father. So again, just to read, um, reiterate, his character was very humble, a person who was very vigilant in his prayers and on top of that he used to act upon all of the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. His pursuit in knowledge, Imam Nisai remained with his Sheikh Qutaybah for about a year, just more than a year. And then he travelled to many other places to study a hadith. So he went to Khurasan, Al-Hijaz, um, Egypt, Iraq, um, also definitely Sham as well. After all of these long journeys, he settled in Egypt, where students of hadith came to him from everywhere narrating hadith from him and learning from his company. Imam Nisai, well-established um, scrutinizer of hadith, he was also very, very, very aware of the juristic rulings and explanation of the hadith. So Imam al-Hakim said that Imam Nasai's knowledge on fiqh was astounding and the way he used to explain things was very clear. And he never used to say anything from his own opinion. He used to use the hadith and the Quran to give his judgment. Imam Nasai, as you all know, had many teachers. One of the most famous is Qutayba bin Sa'id. Um, he had other teachers uh, as well to name Ziyad bin Ayyub, 
um, Hisha bin Ammar, Abu Bakr bin Dar, and many other teachers. He had many teachers, many teachers. While speaking about his teachers, he also had many students as well, notable students as well. Um, to name some, um, Ahmad bin Muhammad bin Salama al Azdi, he was a very famous um, hadith critic. Um, Sulaiman bin Matir al Lakhmi al Tabarani, and Abu Uthman al Nisaburi, and many others as well. Imam al Sa'i's writings, he had authored many books, especially hadith books, and most renowned is As Sunan al Sughra which we know as Sunan Nisa'i, where you can find this. many rulings and most of the hadiths are really this, this synchronized and more to do with Abadat and etc. Our books he has compiled is Fadail al-Quran, Al-Tabaqat, Fadail al-Sahaba, Amal Yawmul wal Layla, very good book um, about actions morning and evening. A lot of scholars refer to that book when you want to learn du'as short dua supplications so the kitab that is known as um, uh, it's also author, um, there's an English translation of it so if you do want to find that book please do it's a very 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 good book myself I have gained benefits from that book as well and he has written uh, many other books as well um, Imam Nisa'i's death um, there is a difference of opinion here but um, Abu Abdullah al-Hafiz said um, he heard from Ali bin Umar saying uh, Imam Nisai was the most knowledgeable among the sheikhs in, in Egypt in terms of fiqh. He passed away while he was ill. And people say that he passed away in Makkah. There's some um, sources that he's buried in between Safa Marwa. And others have said that he passed away in Palestine. That's the differences of opinion. Um, but he passed away on Monday 13th of uh, Safar. 303 AH and he was approximately the age of 88 may Allah SWT forgive me if I'm wrong but the age of 88 he passed away Allah knows best so again difference of opinion where he passed away some say that he passed away in Makkah and is buried in between Safa and Marwa Imam al Nasai and other scholars have rated that um, he moved to Aramla a town in Palestine and he passed away in Palestine. So there's the two differences of opinion of the death of Imam al Nasai. It's important to mention some of the praises of, of Imam al Nasai. Um, great scholars of hadith have mentioned his praise. Um, the first person that I can mention of Imam al Dhahabi, very famous hadith, said that there was no one on the 300 AHEM more perfect in memorization than Imam al Nasai. He was well versed in hadith. It's um, deficiencies and narrators even more than Imam Muslim, Imam Abu Dawood and Imam Al-Tirmizi who was the same rank of Imam Bukhari and Abu Zuhra so Imam Zahabi was um, narrated this um, we also find that Al-Qadi Tajuddin Al-Subki said who, who was more perfect in memorization Muslim, uh, Imam Muslim or Imam in Nisai he replied Imam Nisai was Imam Daru Qutni said Abu Bakr Al-Haddad Al-Shafi narrated lots of hadiths but he did not narrate to other except the hadith of Imam Nisai. He said, I accepted him and Nisai, Imam Nisai, as an excuse between me and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he was a very knowledgeable uh, Imam and he authored many books. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept this short and brief biography of Imam and Nisai. Um, again, you will find um, his biography in hadith books. If you want to look into the life of Imam Nasai, yes, it is important that we look at the life of these um, great shuyukh scholars who have contributed to the religion of Islam. And without them, we we would have failed. We would have failed to understand the Quran and Sunnah. So it is due praise to these individuals who have given their whole life for the sacrifice of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and committed their life, sorry to the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and trying to identify hadiths which have defects, which are sahih, which are mawdu and things like that. If it wasn't for these great Imams, we, would have, we wouldn't have been able to find such um, extensive sources of literature of hadith. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala um, accept us all. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala ignite our hearts 
with the love of the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and may Allah subhanahu wa taala ignite our hearts with the fear of Allah subhanahu wa taala going forth, inshallah, in the future to be able to maintain this life where the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam demonstrated. May Allah subhanahu wa taala give us the tawfiq. Wa ma'alayna illa Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.